art nerds. So today I got an email from Art Snacks with a preview of the watercolor snacks and I immediately forwarded it to my friend Kabocha and we're going to do something a little unusual since both of us think it's kind of nervy that Art Snacks does these promos basically spoiling the context of their blind boxes a month before the blind box actually comes out. We're going to watch the promo video and we're going to dissect what we think is included in the box. So this is kind of like a little bit of a bonus thing. And um, we're going to be doing it a little bit multimedia, which is something I don't normally do on this channel. So I'm going to be doing some screen capture and I'm also going to be doing some face and reaction stuff. So it should be exciting. Hopefully it's fun and hopefully it's funny. Sam has watched the video. I have not. I have not prejudiced myself. I don't know what's in the box. I did look at last uh, season's box. I got last season's box. So any prejudice I have ha is entirely from my experiences with Art Snacks, my experiences with their specialty boxes, and with last season's watercolor snacks. So for those of you who don't know, I did do the spring box. I only intended on doing the spring box. And Art Snacks has this thing where if you don't unsubscribe, they will just keep you subscribed. So you actually have to go in and delete your account. They don't have like a pause my account sort of option yet. So, of course, time for the next box apparently runs around and I get charged for it. And um, instead of canceling this box, I thought, Sh you know what? I will see if they took mine and other unboxers, other artists, complaints and quibbles to heart. And we'll see if the summer art box is art snacks, watercolor snacks is going to be better than the spring. Um, I have high hopes for it because, you know, they've got a whole other season to kind of prepare. They've gotten some feedback. And July is World Watercolor Month. So, you know, this is the summer watercolor snacks. Hopefully they're really going to knock it out of the park. I am really, really hopeful. So I look forward to sharing this with you guys. So keep watching. I have Kabocha here with me. And we're going to take a look at the June watercolor snacks promo video together. Ooh. Kabocha also enjoys watercolor and she's the friend who I often send snarky snarks to and we usually snark together. So fair warning, this might be a snarky video. I don't actually know. Like I said earlier, Kabocha has actually watched the watercolor snacks promo and I have not. I am completely unspoiled and we have 44 seconds of this. We're going to watch it, dissect what's in the box and... Uh, I don't know, we might do some Google Foo, not sure yet. <laughs> and Kabocha has been spoiling all day to tell me what's in this box. So are you ready to start? Yes, I am. All right. Mm, we're going to be painting with these, I see. I ought to try that. What? Oh, painting with the sweet tarts. Yes. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna get a water brush. Looks like a Kuratake water brush. The colors are pretty, but they look dye based. I like the watercolor paper she's using. It looks like a cotton rag. And looks like she's got a plastic palette. Okay. So we know we've got, I'll just have it keep running. We know we get a water brush. I assume we get paper. Um, oh shoot, I kind of recognize, they're a Kurtake product. I kind of recognize the markers down in the bottom. Wait a minute, those are Gansai Tombi. Those are Kuretake Gansai Tombis. Yeah. I like those, okay? Yeah, well, no, it's, it's more, I saw it in the, uh, in the video and I was like, okay, that, that doesn't look like it's laid out. It, it, it's either a color name and a color number or a color name in hiragana. Mm-hmm. Because that, that's not an uncommon layout multiple color options in a package of something in Japan. I've seen yeah. it on markers, I've seen it on paints. You don't see it so much in the United States. 
And I was like, okay, what looks like that? And what is creamy? I I have not that set. I have the bigger set that looks like either the 18 or the 24. And uh, I know that belly band. And I can now see the olive green of the box. I would yeah, bet I, money on that. I can almost guarantee that that is the 24 set. Um, just based on the colors on that bottom row. Do you have the Gansai Tombies by any chance? I do not. I've never used them. I guess you're getting another. I'll send that when I send the core. Because I, I have, I like them. I have the 36 set. My friend Heidi sent them to me. So um, I can rehome them. Yeah, so I'm going to send you the link to the image that I looked up because I was like, this has to be Gansai Tombi. This is, at first I was like, that color selection looks kind of like Daniel Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's the more right. muted colors. Right. It, well, that blue reminds me very much of one that they have. Um, but, I mean, that, that box. But, like, the circle that she's currently painting in the video is like that looks almost like a color I have in Daniel Smith but it's a little too opaque and I remember you mentioned that Gansai Tambi was kind of opaque yeah 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 that's kind of the point so oh if you're gonna send links bring it up on your screen so we get the footage because I'm gonna open the links after we end the recording oh um just so that I'm not revealing any personal information or anything like that Oh, yeah, right. Uh, hold on a second. Um, goodness, I have to figure out how to do that here on this computer. Um, Ooh, it looks like she sketched with colored lead, which I would love it. I mean, okay, so my thing about watercolor snacks and art snacks is I actually don't mind if they send me things I've already done, I've already owned, because I own a lot of art supplies. What I want to see is them offer things that American artists might not use a lot of. Oh, yeah, and color lead is a hard one. Yeah, um, it's starting to become popular, but not... I love it. Like, I think everybody should do it, but it's not as popular. Yeah, like, it, there's only been one place that I've run into it, and that was at a, uh, at a college bookstore. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, that's cool. They probably had that for, like, um, English corrections. Yeah, yeah, because the only colors they had were red, blue, and brown. Brown? And that was in, like, 2009. Yeah. Maybe. That so, sounds like my college bookstore, too. Yeah. There's no plastic being kind of gross. Um, yeah, I'll just have to send you the, the uh, pictures of the products later. Um, so that way you can edit them into the Yeah, video. that'll work. Um. Okay. If you don't have any colored lead, I'll send you some. I use the uh, color Eno. I color... have the entire set. Okay, yeah, good. All right, never mind. Well, because I, I loves it. Yeah, they're great. It's just time. Yeah, they're hard to find in the U.S. in a physical store. Um, I get mine through Amazon. Right. So uh, what kind of paper do you think they include? Okay, so... I'm going to bring back up the, like, one sneaky shot. Her lemons turned out nice. I like them. Um, okay. From here. Ah! It moves so fast. This promo video is so, so I fast. Know, YouTube will continue to stay paused while you're seeking through the dang video. Okay. Oh, and now, now it's too blurry for me to tell what it is. Yeah, so from this... Uh, it, well, I'm gonna let you guess. Oh my gosh! I hmm, it looks familiar. I kind of want to guess it's Langston Prestige. Maybe or Bee Water Bee Aqua Bee. Is it? That was, that was my first thought because of the font. Yeah. But that's not how Aqua Bee is laid out. Aqua Bee is all laid out. Yeah, I'm getting into the really nerdy shit. No, go for it. That's what that's what this is about. This is like my pretest for our art nerd podcast I want to have when I end the blog, where we just yeah. get like 
really nerdy about art supplies and talk about fonts and logos and the layout of the package. So Aquabee tends to lay out their stuff. They, they use a serif font a lot of the time. Yeah. And usually laid out on the left side of the page. But you can tell it says 100% cotton in like three languages. Oh, hey, well, you can keep talking. I am going to dig. Huh? You don't know? I think it could also be. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see if I have it by my desk. I'm going to have to get up and go dig for it. Don't look at this board because I spoiled it. But... Um, I. It could be Canton Lockrell Heritage. Or... No, I don't think it's that. Is, do you think it's a Canton? I don't think it's a Canton. What? Okay, well, it's not Arches. No, I think it is. No! Maybe. I think so. Wow. That is really dark. You know what? I have an art. I, I, I'm still here. Um, yeah. I am going to go dig. Yeah, no, I think this is Arches post break from Canton. I don't know if I own any Arches pads after they quit being distributed, just because I haven't, like, gone out and bought a new pad. Oh, where is that pad you sent me? I have it. Where is it? Well, that's a pock, and those are branded a little bit. Yeah, I have a tape-bound pad, or I used to have a tape-bound pad of um, Arches also that I'm kind of looking for, because, like, now that you point it out, I can see yeah. Ugh. Ha! Oh, of course. Of course. It would be at the very back of my pile of garbage. Of course. That's how this is. That's how you want to be, Art Supplies. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, you're right. You're right. And it'll be... Okay. It's going to be in the end video. But you can't see it right now. But you're right. You are right. It is art. Okay, so like I'm legit kind of excited about this box. It seems like a surprisingly nice box. Yeah. Uh, so arches, which is great. And it's a uh, cotton rag paper, which is kind of nice. They've sent a cellulose paper. Now they've sent a cotton rag paper. Uh, Gensai Tombi, which are nice. Handle very differently from West. Well, I say that. They do handle differently than Western watercolors. It's a little frustrating to see her use them so lightly um, instead of doing like an edigame demonstration. But, you know, whatever. Um, um, water brush? Huh? I have my thoughts on that. Do you? You can't say them. I know, and that's why I was, I, th I, I like doing edigami. I think it's fun. In fact, I've got a couple of examples handy, and I'm going to put them on camera. And I wish it was something that more Western artists would embrace, because it's like a really simple way to do very satisfying watercolors. Yes. And you don't even have to be that good at watercolor either. Yeah, they, they're, they're pretty nice. Um, like, the main thing you got to keep in mind is, that they're really more opaque. Yeah, yeah. And um, if you use an edigami specific paper, they work really well on that kind of paper. I wonder how they would work on uh, Jerry's Ujabe paper. I haven't tried that. I think I sent you a couple sheets. They're small. Okay, I gotta go dig in then. They're uh, handcrafted. I found them exceedingly difficult. Okay. I appreciate the heads up. That's uh, the the first time I used Akashia edigame paper. It I tried to like um, paint on it like I would normally paint, and it spreads mm. out really. It bleeds really bad. You want to paint really thickly on it, and I hadn't been warned. Yeah, it, it, I feel like those are the kinds of papers that if you're gonna work wet, you're probably gonna run into a hard time. Yeah. Which explains why they sent the Canson. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what she talks about in her tutorial video. 
Mm-hmm. I kind of mix feelings about the last one because it didn't really... I kind of felt like if it's a video aimed at beginners, it didn't really talk about beginner techniques enough. But I... It was also 15 minutes and they give it a $15 value. And considering you're distributing this to everyone who's buying the box, I don't really think 15 minute, a dollar a minute is a fair value. Yeah. I'm a jerk, I know. There's editing time and there was a lot of editing done on it. Well, I think it's a fair assessment, especially considering the price that they charge for these boxes. And I understand that they have to pay people to, you know, do the packaging and the research and the acquisition because they've got a company to run. Yeah. But the price or the value that you're getting out of these a lot of time is dangerously close to MSRP when it wasn't, I feel like last, last quarter's box had a really huge discrepancy between its actual value and the quality of what's in it. The inking box for sure had like a forty dollar difference. Yeah, I remember because we were talking on Twitter about that. Yeah, we bonded over that inking box. That inking box made me angry. <laughs> um I'm feeling a lot better about this box though. Yeah, I, some of it is just you know it, the guns I found me. Yeah, you can get them relatively cheap, but they're kind of uncommon. And mm-hmm. The only places that you can really get them reliably seem to be Amazon and JetPens. Yep, and JetPens is kind of the only place that you can get the refills, even, in the U.S. Yeah. And it's just like, mm, yeah, no thanks, JetPens. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the biggest fan. So... I kind of want to do, I guess, I feel like, I feel like, Pad of Arches paper. I literally just looked that up today because I'm writing a Moulin de Roy review and I need to com- compare it to Arches. A ta- um, a four, a pad that's been bound on all four sides, so a block of Arches, is $25 for a 9 by 12, which is what they're going to put in this box, on right. Blick, and it's 34 on Amazon, and Amazon kind of tends to be pricey sometimes for art supplies so that's let's let's say 27 dollars um hmm it, the Gansai Tombi are gonna throw me because it's been a minute since I last looked up the price for that for the 24 piece set let's see um so if we're looking at the Gansai Tombi Amazon has them for 23.19 okay um and that's the 24 set Let's see what JetPens has them. Uh, JetPens has them for twenty eight fifty. Okay, so thirty. Let's just say thirty for the Gansai Tombi. Yeah. Um, so that's fifty Blick right Blick now. Wait, who? Blick has them. Oh, okay. Uh, Blick has them for twenty four ninety seven. Okay. All right. So fifty, so far, and then a water brush. Water brush. People usually price that at what seven bucks a brush. I know, and they're not worth. They're not worth it. Oh, um. No. I'm gonna regret saying this. The James Davenport water brushes are actually pretty decent if you get the empty ones. Yeah, I have no, I have them too. Um, they use the same water brush body as the signature brushes from. Oh, I actually have one of the water brushes that looks a lot like the one I'm seeing in the video. So I'm gonna show that on my other camera. So. Um, I don't mind the Jane Davenport brushes. Also, Michaels used to do the Recollections brushes, and you could get those at a twofer. And they perform yeah. just as well as the Kurataki ones. Yeah. Um, so the, the, uh, the water brushes are a little overpriced, especially when you get them for, you know, three fifty a pop. Yeah. But, you know, their MSRP is probably going to be around 7 bucks. Yeah, um, and I, I'm not going to blame uh, Art Snacks for that either. No. Um, so what, we're up to 57 bucks. 57 bucks. yeah. There has to be something else. I mean, they value the tutorial at $15. So, 50, 60, 72. 72, and it's, I'd have to check how much I paid for the box. It's like an $80 box? I thought it was 89 It could be. It could be. I think I said 80 the last time, and I was wrong. It was, that was too low. 
uh, let's say a $90 box and I'll apologize if I'm wrong. So I really think they had to have thrown in like colored leads or um, a mechanical pencil or a lead pencil or something. I would really like to see that. Yeah, um, that wouldn't be surprising. So what did they have in the last box? They had the Core High Chroma Set. They had three Princeton Velvet Touch synthetic brushes, which the MSRP for that just makes me mad because that's way overpriced for synthetics. Um, right. They had the Windsor & Newton cellulose paper, which doesn't really retail for that much money. And that, that might be it. I felt like it was kind of um, an empty box. Yeah, so maybe they have like two different types of water brushes if they don't have the colored lead. Because in the last one, if I remember correctly, she did her own line work. Yes. So it might be it might be that her sketch is her own supplies. Yeah, I know. I'm just kind of hoping that they'll get on the colored lead bandwagon. Yeah, I mean, if they went, if they got the guns, I told me I would be really excited to see them pick up something like the color, you know, because those are relatively cheap and yeah, you know. Art snacks, if you need something to pad your MSRP, that's a good thing to do. Dude, use. Japanese art supplies, if you need to pad your MSRP, will get any art supplier. Or most art supply reviewers really excited just because it's you can't go down to Plaza or even Jerry's and get it. Yeah. I, yeah, it, you know, here, basically, all we've got is a, is a Jerry's, and then there's Michael's and AC Moore's all over the place. Mm -hmm. So it, we don't have a whole lot here. So I gotta get everything that I get online. Yep, yep. And I don't know this if if this box has the arches pad, colored lead, a cheap mechanical pencil, even like a one dollar mechanical pencil would be fine with the colored lead in it. You could go real cheap. The Gansai Tombi and two water brushes. I could recommend this box to people. Yes, I mean as it is, it's. It's one of those that I would say, look at what's in it, and then buy those supplies. But it, I, I really hope that they have more than three items. Yeah, but me too. I do like that they have, that they probably have the full 24 guns I Tombi set. I mean, looking at this, yeah, it definitely looks like the 24 set. It certainly makes me a little more, ex I mean, like the core is nice, but the high chroma set, I don't know. I love the high co chroma colors. Like there's nothing wrong with those colors. And I actually had an easier time mixing them than I thought I would. Um, but it's one of those things where if you're selling to advanced artists, they own this set. If you're selling to reviewers, they own this set. And if you're selling to beginner artists, they can't use those. They're not going to be able to use those colors. Right. Whereas this set seems to appeal to beginners because you get a lot of colors and they're nice colors. You don't have to do a lot of your own mixing if you don't want to, but it also appeals to more advanced artists who have heard about these watercolors but never bought them for themselves. Or somebody who's looking for like less expensive watercolors or bigger pans. Yeah. It, this is a good set for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, and I kind of wish this was the set we'd gotten in the first box. Like, it, it's so summery, Becca. It so is, summery. it is, but it could be really spring. I think it's because we're looking at the paintings of lemons and feeling that summer vibe, but like, it could be very spring. Do you think they included lemons because they think we're a bit sour? That would be way too, I would, I would accept that jab. I would be like, you're right, I'm bitter. You're right. You got me. Shots fired. I get it. Yeah, well, I, I doubt that they would. Nah, I'd take it, though. I'd be a good sport about it. That's the sort of subtle dig that I would be like, all right, well played. Yeah. <laughs> and the illustration's really cute, too. Like, I look forward to seeing her the tutorial for this. Yeah, I, I do kind of wish that, like, um, like scrawler box, they would include a print of the illustration. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could see that. Because some of her art is adorable. 
Yeah, I do really like her style. We have very different watercolor styles. She's very light handed compared to me. And there's something really refreshing about that too. That was actually one of the reasons, although I was hoping for some more fine art, that was one of the reasons I didn't cancel my subscription was that since we handle our watercolor so differently, I was really hoping she would, I would learn some new things. Yeah. It's, her style is more akin to mine. Mm -hmm. it, she strikes me as the type of person who, um, you know, like with the Gansai Tambi, I can imagine how the tutorial video is going to go. She's probably going to wet an area and then dab additional color in and let it let it spread out over the paper. And see, that's a technique that I would like to do more often. So mm -hmm. I like seeing people do that. Hmm? That's so fun. So that's a tutorial I am definitely, if that's where we're going, I'm looking forward to it. I'm into it. I'm feeling it. Yeah. You had me so psyched out. I thought I was going to hate this book. That's what I thought at first. I was like, Becky's gonna hate this. Okay, I have been I've been told that I've used the wrong B paper and that Aqua B is much better. And I will admit, I've never I don't think I've ever used Aqua B. One of my friends gave me some to play with though at MTAC, so I will soon. I sent you some with Burnet Box. Oh, then I didn't like it with the materials <laughs> you sent. <laughs> I know that's the point. I know that's the point. Maybe I have used it. I don't know. I remember my, my feelings towards B paper is like, this is like painting on toilet paper. <laughs> so, but I'm excited, like, and this isn't just like, you know, brand snob hype with the with the arches. I do like arches. I think most people like arches, except for like um, the batch problems they had. But like in general, arches has a really good name. Yeah. It, Seems like a pleasant box. Yeah, I, I, I'm also kind of hoping there's like because this is a promo. I'm hoping there's some stuff in here we didn't see. Yeah. So like I'm looking at this promo and I can't tell if if you go to 11 seconds into the video, I can't tell if one of those colors is metallic or if it's just wet. I was literally just thinking. I hope they included some metallics. I don't think the 24 set has any oh are you talking about that yellow up there or the orangey yeah. color look some of the other colors on there yeah, okay. gansai tombi on western papers will sometimes dry with like it's not glycerin they use a different kind of binding um but it will dry with like what we would think of as like a glycerin kind of sheen yeah yeah okay yeah i see that i counted it out and it's 24 for sure Damn it, I was so excited. I was like, but what if they included the metallics or gave a pan of like the gold? Right? Right? Um sparkle, come on. We could we could hope. We could hope. Uh, or like I, threw a fine tech pan in there. Although the fine tech pans run at like retail at like six dollars each. I don't know. We got to wait until June to find out. Yeah. Yeah. I, mm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm going to be so angry if they delay my box. Like what happened with the March. I will be so angry because I'm like really kind of hype about this box now. I was hyped for the March box, but I didn't know what was in it. Um, Not that core is. Hmm? Yeah. The March box, we didn't really So y you and someone else on the Ink Drop Cafe Discord, I'm not going to name names just in case they're not comfortable with it, but maybe next time we can have them do this with us. Uh, you guys kind of sleuthed out what was going to be in this box. Were you close? Um, not really. Woo! Um, so at first I thought, so when I saw the colors, because I didn't really pay attention to the promo that they sent out. Um, when I saw the colors, I thought that they were doing the Winsor & Newton set again, or a different limited edition. Um, so I was surprised to see that it was the core set. But everybody on Instagram, when they posted it, 
um, you know, the person who I was talking with was like, hey, I think you got the quote by Chromasec. And people posted the uh, supply list. And I was like, okay. All right. Y'all did not feel jelly for me, which is, no, it's okay. No. I wasn't feeling jelly for myself either. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about this box. Yeah, I'm actually a little bit jealous because I've been trying to find a reason to try the Gonzalez. But you're going to get them because I already own the 36 piece set. So once I do the field test, it's yours. Yeah, I know. It's just, I gotta wait. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh That's the problem of being next in line for dupe supplies. It's like, oh, I get to see someone else play with it first. I know. I gotta learn how to use it before I can use it. Oh, what am I gonna do, Becca? Well, I am really glad this box is not disappointing because, like, I would have had a rage fit on you. I really would have, which is childish of me, but I would have because it would have been, like, two bad boxes in a row. And, like, last box wasn't that bad. It was just disappointing. I think that's almost worse. Yeah, because at least with... I mean, I do a lot of bad art supplies or challenging art supplies. But the thing is, is when you expect them, so the thing is, is that when somebody violates your expectations, it almost hurts worse than when you weren't expecting anything at all. That is true because I'm never disappointed with Burn It Box, but I also know that the floor is the ceiling for <laughs> Burn It Box. <laughs> Whereas with this, I gotta say, like, Art Snacks has broken my heart before. And, like, their hype team is on point. I need their hype team to hype my comic. Yes. Because they get me excited every time. It's like it's like a bad ex-boyfriend, like, a changed baby. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think you have good PR, but it's bad. I've seen you get burned too many times to really want to subscribe. Yeah. Well, I used to be a really big fan of their boxes. Like, early 2016, when I was doing that year of comparison review, they had some really solid boxes. Yeah, but, like, when they start talking about getting Eastern European art supplies, like... <laughs> yeah. Like, I was, I was hoping for something unique. Yeah. Not freaking pencil. Yeah, I was kind of hoping for, um... The St. Petersburg White Knights or Yarka St. Petersburg watercolors. Not like a full set, but like a couple pans. If they even tried the student Yarkas, that would have been nice. Yeah, it, it would have been true, too. Yeah, it, well, so those pans are actually pretty good. I know I've done, I've, uh, I did a, it'll come out soon. Sorry it's taking so long, but I like them. I actually like them better than the Jack Richson ones of the same thing but they aren't Yarka branded yeah like they're good inexpensive little pigmented watercolor paints mm -hmm. that's what I started with when I was watercoloring well, you started better than I did because I started with a Koinor dried set you know the the, the wheel ones that like oh. yeah they were terrible it's like painting with chalk and Crayolas yeah see uh, so I started with those Yarka and then, uh, then my friend, or no, it wasn't my friend. My friend sent me the Yarkas. I got a set of the, um, uh, what's it called? I can't remember. They're really, uh, whoa, and nickel. Oh, I hate those. Watercolors. Oh, I hate they're not good at all. I hate those. Like, I feel like there's something really pernicious about, like, crummy art supplies that have, like, professional packaging. Yeah. Because it tricks you. You think you're getting the real thing. That's my big problem with Cotman, is they often package the Cotman half pans in the same packaging as the professional half pans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish some of these companies would, like, more clearly differentiate the student-grade supplies from the professional-grade. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who was confused as to the difference between Cotman and uh, the professional. 
So this person probably would do well with wash, or actually Dan Zaitan. They yeah. Yeah, that would probably be the one for them. If they like to pick to paint thickly, that's what these are designed to do. They do love to paint thickly, and they like to paint a lot of um, a lot of landscape. And some of the stuff that they have done, um, I saw I saw some of their art in an alumni show for one of the local art schools. Um, and bear in mind that they work in uh, in tech. But she very trendy new art toward um, a Japanese sort of painting style, which the guys yeah. found they were perfect for. Yeah, and if. And I, traditional Japanese. If your friend's having trouble finding those, Karen Dosh makes a dried half pan, or it's a dried full pan called the Studio Gouache. And those are actually pretty good. Um, I'm iffy about opaque watercolors just because they tend to be like chalk disasters, but these aren't bad at all. That's good enough. That's good enough. I, I still have, uh, I got the acrylic gouache because it's on sale. Series is clearing out all the 20 milliliter tubes that yeah. are in the store. That makes sense because they might um, harden over time if they don't get used because they have acrylic in them. Well, so they're getting rid of them because um, Turner is switching to a larger tube format. So what they're going to be carrying in the physical stores is going to be different than what they're or than what uh, Turner wants them to have. Yeah. But I got like 15 tubes. For, what was it? Uh, under 60 bucks. Oh, that's nice. I mean, I mean, I know some of the people watching this have just like left the build. They're like, nope, 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 nope. But, yeah. but for those of you who are still here, y'all know that's not that bad a deal. <laughs> yes, yes. But, um, but that's 15 tubes. We're not. We, we, the, the, that's a lot. Yeah, on that note, the Gansai Tambe that we're looking at in this video, um, it's basically $2 for a pan. And those pans are huge. They are the size of three full-size Western-style watercolor pans. Wait, really? Yes. I didn't it was that big. Yes. They are not as deep. And they're filled about halfway. So you're really getting, like, two full pans of paint. No, it's a lot of paint at a really inexpensive price, considering. And they're very richly painted. They are. This is why they're so... They, okay, two years ago, these things were bonkers popular with crafters. Like, every craft YouTube channel was reviewing these. Sandy Allnock was looking at these. Craft Test Dummies, the Frugal Crafter, they were all talking about... They were excited for these. And they were really hard to find for a while because crafters were buying them because they're very accessible, very affordable, and you get a lot of paint. Right. So I like them. If anyone watching this is looking for an even more affordable option, Mozart makes a Como Rebi set, and I've reviewed them here. And those are the same size as Western pans. You get 40 colors. It includes neons. So some of those colors are dye-based. And it has metallics for like $25 on Amazon. Mm, that'll be nice. Yeah, they're not bad at all. I, and I, th I think they're probably made with the same formula that the Gansai Tombi are made with. Quite possible. Now I'm curious to look up what... Uh, you know what? I'm going to look up the MSPS for this. You might as well. Um, uh, what's her name? Something Saves the Day. I'm um, Sadie. Sadie Saves the Day did a really good video explaining what Gansai Tombi watercolors are, explaining what they're made out of. Um, so I'm going to link that in the card so people can check that out. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a great video, too, because at the time she did it, I couldn't find information about what is actually in these paints. Let's see. They don't mention, the MSDS doesn't mention the uh, carrier. They mention all the pigments. That's cool. Um, you should send that to me, and I will include that when I do the um, the full unboxing video. Because I know, like, uh, Heidi has asked me what pigments some of the brands I've reviewed use. So I know people do care about that. Yeah, well, it doesn't, like, list out the pigments. It, it only really seems to uh, list out the toxic 
or potentially toxic pigments. So cadmium. It, they don't even go that deep. Oh. Okay, iron oxide, titanium dioxide, carbon black, yellow organic, red organic, blue organic, and resin. Hmm. Not even cadmium. So this could also be a good paint option for people with cats who drink their watercolor water or people with small children who tend to get into everything. Well, let's see what this says. Um, Cause that's just the composition. Actually, while I am talking to you, I'm gonna go grab my Gansai Tambi and show them on my other cam. Uh -huh. Where did I put them? I literally just, oh, I know they're there. And I'll grab the Como Rebbies while I'm at it. Yeah, the, the word Como Rebbi makes me think of fireflies. Uh, the back says, is a simple word in Japanese which describes the subtle beauty of sunlight shining through the leaves of trees and the dance the rays make. Oh uh, yeah, it's yeah, Komori is written with the sun just as tree and sun. There's another one in there that I don't know because I can only read at a third grade level in Japanese. You still read much better than I do when it comes to Japanese. Mm -hmm. I retained none of it. Also, if you are a nerd like me, you really like Japanese. Uh, the WWJ deck actually has some of these. But yeah, come on, it's some like both. Oh, well, this is a big taste of what the podcast is going to be like, because it's going to be me, you, and Heidi being real pedantic. Oh, God. Heidi's probably going to be like, Pam doesn't know what she's talking about. Spent more time in Japan than me. No, well, no. Heidi spent two weeks when I went, but Heidi is currently taking Japanese lessons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so maybe. Heidi's Japanese is more recent. Sorry. All right, I think we have chewed this over as much as we can for a promo video that's 44 seconds long. Oh dear. I know, right? We like really made a lot of meat out of very little meat. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's very interesting. We could, uh, we could like take a second to pause and then mention what we think is in it. And uh, be like, here's our predictions. For everybody who skipped to the end? Yeah. Okay. Or, you know, put it at the start. No, 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 no. At the end. Maybe at the start. Yeah. I want them to watch the whole thing, all 44 minutes of this. Okay. So the, the, the teal deer is. We suspect that there is a pad of artist paper, a water brush, and the the uh, 24 set of the Kuretake Ganze Tambi. That still doesn't quite bring us to our total. So I'm going to say they either included, maybe either and, which I'm hoping it's an and, colored lead, would be really cool with this and another water brush so that we get two water brushes. Maybe. Or maybe they gave us more Princetons. More what? More Princetons. 
Mm. I'll take, I will take, I've gotten, okay. So I did the 2016 year of unboxings, right? I have so many synthetic Princetons from Art Snacks because literally every other brush was have some Princeton brushes. So I am full up. I don't need any more. I'm good. Hey, Art Snacks, if you're listening to this, can you please, if you're going to try synthetics, can you please, 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 please try and do something like the Mimics? If I hear that you do that in a brush or in a, in a box, I will actually buy that month's box. They have, I'm pretty sure they've got a partnership with Kurataki and I'm pretty sure they, and this is just guessing. Okay, I don't have an inside in anymore. Um, I think they have a deal with Kurataki, and I think they have a deal with Windsor Newton, and I think they have a deal with with Princeton. Yeah, but I mean, it, I mean they got the cores in one of them, so I mean, that is true. They could always just do a one off. But they've done Liquitex stuff at, too, because I got their liquid acrylic, like their high di uh, high flow liquid acrylics. Oh, I thought that was Golden that did those. Oh, you're no okay. Golden makes core. Liquitex is attached to Windsor Newton. Sorry. Well, yeah. That's a reminder to myself. Oh, okay. Because I will... Because I, mean, I know that Golden has high flow as well. Yeah, they... Yeah, at this point, they all do. <laughs> mm. it, it's it's getting really confusing and mis mishmashy. Okay, so what would you like to see in a future box? I... I, I understand that Kalinsky is really expensive, but I would like to see a synthetic Kalinsky. Mm -hmm. uh, They've done a Kalinsky before. They did the Princeton 7050R as part of their art snacks for, I mean, their uh, Inktober box. So they've done Kalinsky. I, I would like to see a, a synthetic one. Okay. Synthetic Kalinsky. Those are, those are difficult to produce and easy to screw up. Mm-hmm. Um, I would probably like to see more variety in the brush thing. The Neptunes have this really nice dagger. Yeah, I've like, I've like, I flirted with that da dagger on dickblick.com many times. Yeah, just anything other than rounds. Or uh, uh, anything other than rounds or flats, really. But like a dagger, it, I like these. Um, the Neptune dagger particularly for like making tree bark because it's the exact right shape so if you're working uh, wet on slightly dry you can kind of just get that stippling that would be cool Any anything else? Mm, yeah, that's hard to say I, I, I'm looking over at my stuff um, the the um, it's uh, P.H. Martins, but it's not the, is it the Hydras? It, it's the, the very vivid ones. The, it's the dye base ones, probably. The concentrated radiant watercolor? Yes, the radiant skin. Speaking of, when I was in Japan, they made, I know. <laughs> I've never seen them in the U.S., so I bought three. They make um, Dr. P.H. Martins pigment. And that would be really cool, cause you listed on the American exactly, American. and they have like a ball in them to shake them up. Oh, so I might send them to you after I'm done. I only got three colors, cause like I could, I wanted them all, and I couldn't afford them all. Obviously, I think they're like super liquid gouache though. But that's so cool. It is cool. And we don't have that here. We can't get a hold of it. Yeah. Um, one thing that would be cool to see from like Art Snacks is for them to flirt with. So one of the things I like about Daniel Smith's watercolors is that they granulate a lot. Yeah. Or certain colors do. Um, and I like some of the ones that actually separate out the watercolors. Like, um, oh God, I have to look at them because I can't remember what they are off the top of my head. Um, is that me? No, that's me. Somebody's calling me. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. 
I don't know who it is. It's a private number. They can leave a voicemail. Sorry, I um, I have Project Pi. No, don't be sorry. I I get how that works. Yeah, it's cheap. It works. Yep. Okay, so more granulating colors. Yeah, more granulating colors because that's a really neat effect. Um, so I, you're probably not going to see it with the newer formulations of the quinacridone gold. Mm -hmm. Those are fun because you have a tube of the old one. Yep. Got, I think you got to see how that one works. I, I actually have it in my standard palette now because I really like the color. Nice. Uh, undersea Green, I think that's the name of it, is like a really beautiful granulating color that will granulate into blue and into green. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a um, very, it, it's very nice. It's got a yellow undertone. Yeah, yeah, it's a really nice color. Um, there's a blue and a purple which are kind of similar, but they're, uh, I can't even remember their names. I'm tired after a long day at work, um, but they do granulate very, I, I think one of them is like royal, royal purple or something. I don't know. But yeah, granulating col colors would be awesome. Oh, um, like a, um, I don't care for these, but a um, masking fluid pen. I've never used one that worked well. So I would love to see them find one that works well and send it out. Yes. That would be a lot of fun. Um, I think even in Japan, not that I saw any, but I've heard rumors that there's even like almost ballpoint tip finenesses for some of them. Oh. Huh. I couldn't find them, but something to dream about. Oh, I found the color. Um, Isabel Marine, Imperial Purple, and... Um, one is shadow violet is also not bad yeah so i don't know yeah it would actually be really cool to see them go like a completely different slant and uh feature american create like um manufacturers like daniel smith or like some of the handmade watercolor manufacturers a deal with art snacks could really make somebody's year a lot better and it would be a lot easier to spend the money on the watercolor snacks box if I knew that somebody who makes these materials was actually getting paid. Yeah. But I also kind of realized that that's kind of like a wish list kind of thing. It's probably not super feasible for them. No, it's probably difficult, but what are you going to do? I can wish. We can. So... Yeah. Good job this time, Art Snacks. It looks like the uh, summer box is going to be a lot of fun, and it looks like it's applicable to a variety of artists. I feel much better about this box than I felt about the spring box, and I am really excited about getting that Arches paper because Arches is always nice and it always gets used in my studio. And Kabocha is already eyeballing those Kuretake Gansai Tombi watercolors. Yes, I am. Thank you so much for joining me with this. This was like, a, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, we should do this more often. I know, right? I'm already kind of like thinking up excuses for how we can do this. Oh, um, next time we could nerd out of that cooler. You mean the, the half pans that are coming out that I am waiting for them to come in? <laughs> yes. The yes. ones I might have bought? Oh, I need to buy them. I'll let you know if they're worth it. I have no idea. Basically you know, what I'm... Hmm? We can talk about it. Yeah, what I'm looking for is that they will reactivate better. That Not that the... Because I, I also prepared a bunch of my core watercolors in like a dry... You know, like, like from tube and half pans. So I can compare the two to see if it's worth it. Yeah. So... Oh God, you can do so much editing on you guys' end. <sighs> yeah. The color of rambling. Oh no, we're this is going as is. Oh dang! People can treat it like a podcast. Hmm. Maybe you should put it on SoundCloud. Maybe so. There aren't really. There's a couple of art supply. There's art, art supply posse, and I actually 
don't really care for their podcasts. But there aren't a lot of art supply podcasts. There's more fountain pen podcasts. Hmm. 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 Might be worth it. But anyway. All right. Well, have a good day. Thank you so much for giving me an hour of your life yep. that you can never have back. I'm sure I'll figure it out. All right. I mean, I, I, mean, I could always just sacrifice sleep now. No, 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 <laughs> no. Self-care is important. Yeah, guys, don't sacrifice sleep. Not worth it. Bad idea. It's a bad time. I might even try painting with those sweet tarts. Just really set myself up for a land of regrets. Oh, you're just going to get chalk. No, duh. That's the point. Oh, God. Leave it out and see how many ants it attracts after you're done painting. Oh, no. It's it's like summertime. That's already ant problem. Mm-hmm. All right. Have a good day. I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Bye.